Hello everyone, Dr. Anna here, and as promised, today I'm going to talk about the hormones that affect our menstrual cycle and actually what our reproductive hormones are doing on a monthly cyclical basis. Now, even if you remotely had your period years ago, it stopped, I want you to listen in because these key concepts will help you understand what happens as we age and also the importance of our hormones even way post-menopause. We have our uterus, our fallopian tubes, and our ovaries here. Now, and this is a, a depiction here of the inside lining of the uterus down here. And this is a function of the um, ovary here in this image. In the first part of our cycle, there's a couple key hormones that start to kick into place. So first we get the hormone ephesate coming up from our pituitary. We talked about what a hormone is in our last video, and I talked about it as hormones are derived from the mother, you know, the mother um, substrate cholesterol. And just like if cholesterol was light going through a prism and producing all this spectrum of light, those are the number of hormones that are produced through our body. Another analogy would be being in a busy marketplace and there's lots of voices everywhere because all these hormones, if the voices, the communication system is a hormone, these hormones are, you know, speaking, instructing, doing different things in different parts of our body. Some may be buying some fresh fish, others may be looking at fruits and vegetables, doing different things at different times. So that's what's happening here. Our pituitary gland is releasing FSH at the first part of the cycle. FSH comes in and tells the follicles that are around your ovary to produce an egg for the month. Now, when we are born, we are born with a finite number of eggs in our ovary. And as we age, that, you know, that declines every month. We never create more follicles or eggs. We never create more eggs than what we are born with. And so it's important to understand. So FSH is like that guy in the marketplace with a microphone right now or megaphone saying, hey, ovary, time to produce some follicles and early on that's awesome because your ovary and our reproductive years and our teens and our 20s and early 30s our ovary is very responsive just needs a just needs to hear it once no shout and doesn't need to be shouted out to produce the follicle and to get ready to release the egg it just needs to be told once very receptive very responsive the follicle starts to develop at this point a little bit of FSH is needed. During this time, estrogen is our other hormone that's being really dominant in this phase. This is an estrogen dominant proliferative phase as the endometrium starts to kick in. And then you get about midway in your cycle when it's time to ovulate. So this trigger, estrogen's building up in your body and we hit a critical point. Our pituitary says, okay, to, the egg is beautifully developed, the follicle is big enough. So LH, another pituitary hormone, will come in and, and shout to the ovary, okay, time to produce, you know, time to release that egg from the follicle. At that same point, we get a little bump of testosterone, our hormone, because here when we're ovulating, we're getting fertile, our testosterone, our drive, desire hormone, kicks out a little bit and we get a little surge in libido, which makes sense because now you've got an egg that needs to be fertilized, a little boost in uh, our natural reproductive intent comes forth with that testosterone. So you've got LH coming in here, a peak of that, and now the egg is released. This, what was a follicle, releases the egg, now becomes this corpus luteum. So the second phase of your cycle we call the luteal phase. This is predominantly a progesterone phase because it's gonna, help this nice thickened endometrium really get organized. It's like estrogen puts the sheets down and progesterone makes the bed a nice comfy place for this now egg to, if it's fertilized, to implant on the uterus and create a pregnancy. If that doesn't happen, progesterone levels decline, estrogen levels decline, continue to decline, and 
we start back at cycle day one and we have our cycle. So that's kind of what's happening through our reproductive ages. Now, as we get a little bit older and our, ovaria, our ovaries are kind of resistant, maybe like the stubborn teenager, and you may have to use a megaphone and really shout at, <laughs> shout at her to, uh, to produce a follicle, to produce an egg. We get increasing numbers of FSH and LH and then can have um, difficulty getting pregnant or that leads into the next phase of our life, which is in the perimenopause and menopause, which I'll talk about in our next video. So that's a brief introduction of what's happening in your body on a cyclical level. It can be from, you know, our natural cycle without birth control pills is typically anywhere from 22 to 42 days. It just depends on what your natural rhythm is and that's all normal. So in our next video, I'll talk a little bit more about what's happening when it gets in balance. But for now, enjoy, share this message, really work to understand what's happening in your body, the beautiful hormones that we have, and share this video. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video. We'll go a little bit deeper into our hormones as we age.